What's up everyone? This is K Rob here. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos. It's been about four years, give or take. Uh, last time I did one of these, she wasn't that big. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy what I'm bringing to the table today. Um, I got to thinking recently about cursed teams in pro sports and I wanted to discuss the teams I felt are the most cursed or snake bit in the in the major four leagues here in North America. Now this will not include teams that have won championships, you, whether it's one or 20. Because uh, every team's had snake bit moments whether they've won championships or not, but I'm specifically focusing on the four teams, one per league, that I feel are the most snake bit and they cannot have won a championship. So I was going to talk about my beloved St. Louis Blues before 2019 happened. Because if you know, you know. You can't win with Wayne Gretzky, you, you got a problem, you know. So um, the inspiration for this was from watching the uh, NFL Network's top 10 snake bit franchises. And, of course, their number one's my number one until they win a championship. So I thought that was a really cool video. and It's, it's dated, but still holds up really well because just about every team on that list doesn't have a ring to this day. <laughs> So my first choice, we're going to go ahead and start with the NFL, is the Cleveland Browns. Both versions of the Cleveland Browns. The original Browns, you have Art Modell, the owner, up until 1995. And we're going to get to 1995 when it comes to Art Modell. But he buys the team in 1961, and then he fires Jim Brown because he didn't want to come back to play, and he wanted to do movies. Jim Brown's Jim Brown, as far as I'm concerned. You can't tell him a damn thing. So there's that. Then you get to the 80s, which was the best run of Brown's football during the Super Bowl era, and you lose three heartbreaking playoff games, two AFC championships, both to the Broncos. You have Red Right 88 with the cardiac kids um, with Brian Sype throws an in end zone interception late in the game against the Raiders. Raiders going to win Super Bowl 15. Then you got the drive, the 1986 AFC Championship game, just pain. Uh, John Elway takes it 98 yards at Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Browns lose in overtime. Broncos go to the Super Bowl. Then you have the next year. They go back, but this time the game's in Denver. Ernest Biner having a great game. He's the reason that the Browns are in the game. It's fourth quarter, inside the 10. He gets down to about the two-yard line, and then all of a sudden, pop, the ball pops out on him. He, he uh, fumbles the ball. Denver recovers. They run the clock out. Broncos go to the Super Bowl. Then you get 1995. This was coming off of a year in 1994. The Browns won 11 games, won a playoff game with some guy named Bill Belichick. You might have heard of him. And then it's announced midseason because Art Modell is virtually broke. We're moving the team to Baltimore. You announced this with six games left in the season. If you can ever find the footage on YouTube, and it does exist, uh, I highly encourage you to, to look up the Cleveland Browns' last game, 1995. They're playing at home against the Bengals. There are fans that are ripping seats out of the foundation and throwing them onto the field. This was a game Cleveland won. They missed the playoffs, went 6-10 and 10 that year. And at the end of the season, they fired Belichick. So, yeah, there's that as well. They fired the guy who would go on to win 89 Super Bowls coaching the New England Patriots. Uh, I have some other honorable mentions uh, for the NFL choice, which were the New York Jets. Because also, speaking of Belichick, they hired him to be their head coach in 2000, and he quit one day later. So they also are the reason that Tom Brady is a thing. So thank you, New York Jets. Uh, Detroit Lions, I mean, if you watch them this year, you'd believe they're completely cursed, and they are. But I believe that no franchise in the Super Bowl era has had worse luck than the Cleveland Browns. Now, they've won multiple championships in the pre-Super Bowl era. But from 1967 to current, I'm surprised there's even liquor left in the city of Cleveland quite honestly. Um, now, on to Major League Baseball. Obviously, it's easy to say, well, why don't you pick the Chicago Cubs? Cubs won their ring now. I'm a Cardinals fan, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't hate the Cubs, but I don't feel any kind of way towards them either. You know, they're just our rival, whatever. For me, because this was the coolest team to me growing up, 
the Seattle Mariners have to be the most cursed Major League Baseball franchise, and that's worse than the Cleveland Indians, soon to be Guardians, or if they change, whatever, Cleveland Indians for right now. Because they've won championships. It's been since 1949, and I, it's safe to say they won a World Series in Major League Two. But the Seattle Mariners, at one point, had prime Ken Griffey Jr., prime Randy Johnson, entering his prime Alex Rodriguez, and at one point, your franchise sets the all-time record for wins in a season with 116. You have the Rookie of the Year, a Gold Glover, and the League MVP all in one person in Ichiro, and you can't even get to the World Series. That was 2001, and you haven't been back to the playoffs. They have literally missed the postseason 20 consecutive years. You're also owned by Mario. Literally, the owners of the Seattle Mariners are Nintendo of America. But you couldn't win with arguably the coolest baseball player to ever live, maybe the most talented all-around baseball player to ever put on cleats in junior, Randy Johnson, the most intimidating and dominant left-handed pitcher I've ever seen. Alex Rodriguez, who I believe in his first full year with the Mariners, was a 40-40 guy. The 1996 team set the all-time record until 2017 for home runs in a season, and you missed the playoffs. That's a crime against baseball to waste Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Jr. should have a World Series ring. I... Yeah, it's easy to say the Cubs, or you can say the Red Sox, but guess what? Red Sox, since 2004, have won four World Series. They're all right. They're off the hook. Cubs, they're off the hook now. Billy Goat, Bartman, you know, Black Cat, all that, That's they're off the hook. The Seattle Mariners are the most snake-bit franchise in Major League Baseball. On to the National Hockey League. As you can sort of see in the back there, I got a framed picture of Vladimir Tarasenko, my favorite blues player from our cup run in 2019. If we didn't win that championship, there's no question the Blues are the most snake-bit franchise in the history of the National Hockey League. But because we did, we're off the hook now. And that title officially goes to the team with the longest postseason drought in the NHL right now. That's the Buffalo Sabres, who have not made the postseason since 2011. 2011. In 1999, this team got royally screwed by bad officiating, losing the Stanley Cup Final on a goal that should not have counted. That's why in Buffalo, people still say no goal to this day, where Brett Hull, at the time playing for the Dallas Stars, scored a goal that won the Stanley Cup for Dallas, while both of his feet were in the goalie crease. For the uninitiated, that's where the goaltender stands. It's the little blue area where the goalie stands. At the time, it was a heavily enforced rule that you could not shoot the puck while standing in that area. But he, it happened. He scored the goal, and Dallas won the Stanley Cup. The Sabres have not won a Stanley Cup. They've been twice. In 2007, they won the President's Trophy, which goes to the team with the best overall record. They scored over 300 goals, which was the most in well over a decade. That, that team was phenomenal. Didn't even make the Stanley Cup Finals. Very well could have won that year. That was an amazing team. They were very fun to watch. But now, add in how bad this, fr- this organization's been run for the last decade, th- it, it has to be them. You, know? you could have also said the Washington Capitals, but they won in 2018. So they're off the hook. Buff the Buffalo Sabres, I mean, honestly, the city of Buffalo is just jinx in general when it comes to sports. And you could have easily said, well, why not the Buffalo Bills? They lost four Super Bowls in a row. Their most famous athlete is O.J. Simpson. I get it. But they at least got to four in a row. They had plenty of Hall of Famers on those teams. Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, Andre Reid, Bruce Smith, and a plethora of other great players. Marv Levy, Hall of Fame head coach. So, no, I can't pick the Bills. Um, And they're in a position where they very well could win a Super Bowl with the team that they currently have. Cleveland, it looked good, but Browns things happened. Also, you got to throw in for the Browns, Bottlegate, their first game back when the the new Browns were brought back into the league in 1999. They got shut out uh, by Pittsburgh on Sunday Night Football. Of course, if you're a Browns fan, you're thinking, well, of course it was Pittsburgh. 
The Steelers own us, except for that playoff game last year. Finally got them. Um, last but not least, and I actually had to consult my sister, so shout out to my sister Jessica, Miss J. Renee, for this suggestion. I was torn. Uh, I had about four different teams I was uh, cycling through, like who truly is the most snake bit NBA franchise. You know, I was thinking the New York Knicks, but also they got a championship. You know, they had the, they had the run in the 70s. So it came down to three. The Minnesota Timberwolves, the Sacramento Kings, and the Los Angeles Clippers. The Timberwolves have been around over 30 years. They've won two playoff series the entire time. The Sacramento Kings have the current longest postseason drought in the NBA. They haven't made the playoffs since 05-06. That team also got legitimately screwed in the 2002 Western Conference Finals when it was later admitted that referees had rigged Game 6, which the Kings, had they had won, would have gone to the NBA Finals and probably would have destroyed the New Jersey Nets en route to their first championship. But... When you look at the litany of bad trades, bad draft picks, bad basketball, bad luck, and worse ownership, the, the Los Angeles Clippers just might be the most cursed franchise in all of professional sports. And I'm a big believer in curses. You know, having been a sports guy for so long, you eventually just have to admit, man, some of this stuff is real because you can't make it up anywhere else, you know. So... The Los Angeles Clippers were born as the Buffalo Braves. And at one point, this franchise had future Hall of Famer, one of the greatest rebounders and leaders in NBA history, Moses Malone. So because of the Clippers, they trade him to the Philadelphia 76ers along with a first round pick in 1978. That is a future first. And in 1984, the 76ers, who... Keep in mind, in 1983, had won the NBA championship in large part because of the contributions of Moses Malone with Julius Irving and the rest of those boys. They wound up getting the number five pick. That pick in 1978 became the fifth overall pick in 1984, which, as we know, is one of the is either the second, first or third greatest draft class in the history of the NBA. The Philadelphia 76ers used the Clippers pick to take Charles Barkley. This franchise not only gave away Moses Malone because he wasn't getting playing time, he wasn't happy, they not only give him to the 76ers, they give the Sixers the 1983 NBA title and a future Hall of Famer and Charles Barkley. I don't understand. You also have the first overall pick in the 1998 NBA draft and... Instead of taking someone like, I don't know, Vince Carter or Paul Pierce for crying out loud, you take a project player named Michael Oloa Candy, affectionately known as the Candy Man. And all this dude is known for is getting his soul eviscerated by Amari Stoudemire in a game, I want to say it was 2002, um, which my, I, th- I believe was Stoudemire's rookie year. This dude got a race and put on a nasty poster. You could have had Vince Carter, one of the most dynamic scorers, and coming from the words of Michael Jordan, the greatest dunker of all time, or Paul Pierce, multi-time All-Star, future Hall of Famer, NBA champion. Oh, also at the end of the top ten of that draft was some dude named Dirk Nowitzki. Now hindsight is twenty twenty, but Vince Carter and Paul Pierce went in the top five. Also, Anton Jameson was in that top five, and he was an all-star, NBA champion, very underrated scorer. Uh, the Clippers, literally. You also, you were gifted by David Stern because the league had controlling had controlling um, stock of the New Orleans Hornets at the time where Chris Paul played. The NBA vetoed a trade to send him to the Lakers for basketball reasons. But you are gifted Chris Paul in his prime, which gave you Lob City. You had Blake Griffin catching lobs from him. DeAndre Jordan. Those Clippers teams from the um, 2010, 2010 to 2015, that was some fun, fun basketball to watch. 
Y'all couldn't win with prime Chris Paul. You also had a racist owner in Donald Sterling. That's a whole nother, whole nother soapbox for another day. But you had Donald Sterling ruining your organization. And you're playing in the same building as not only the Lakers, who won five NBA titles in the Staples Center. You also have the, uh, the Los Angeles Kings of the National Hockey League putting two Stanley Cup banners up in there, too. And what do you got? Y'all just now, this past year, made the Western Conference Finals for the very first time. That's pathetic. Took y'all three cities because also they played in San Diego before coming to Los Angeles with the intention of winning Los Angeles from the Lakers. Ain't nobody doing that. I promise you. No matter what the Lakers' stature is, even when they were bad post, you know, Kobe and uh, Pau Gasol, even when the team was bad, you're still not taking L.A. from the Lakers. You also get Kawhi Leonard. You get Paul George. Supposed to be the the unstoppable new Clippers. And y'all still can't win a ring. Everything you try backfires no matter what. There's a reason y'all are called the Lakers' little brother. They let you out of the basement sometimes. You, you, you do a few things every once in a while. Win a championship, even make an NBA final. That's the worst part about the Los Angeles Clippers is that they actively try now. Now they got good ownership with Steve Ballmer. But actively try to put a championship product on the court. Still can't get it done. No matter what. That's why people say... Y'all are the Clippers. Well, folks, those are my thoughts on the four most cursed franchises in each of the North American professional sports leagues. Uh, we'll have this up here in just a little bit. If you like what you saw, hit a like. You know, put, Hit the bell to my channel. I'm going to be getting back into doing this a lot more often, so be on the lookout for more content from me. I do appreciate y'all kicking it with me, Kyle or K-Rob, whichever one you want to call me by doesn't really matter but i appreciate the support and we'll talk to you soon